There we go. Here we are. Hey, I'm Phil. This is Discover Tai Chi for Lim Power. Uh, and here we are again, another Thursday. It's getting darker, the nights are drawing in, and Halloween is round the corner. And then before you know it, we'll be at Christmas. Okay, sorry about mentioning that. Uh, right, let's get moving. Uh, last week, we kind of explored the difference between agency, didn't we? Making waves or being moved by waves, and we used wave hands in clouds as a movement to explore that. If you wish, find that video um, on the Lim Power YouTube channel uh, and, and have an explore of that. I'm hoping it was quite nice. I've got a, another theme for today, which kind of links with that idea of agency. So first of all, let's just get ourselves moving. I'm going to do a little flow of the first four movements of eight strands of brocade. A, they're very familiar movements for most people. They're very simple. Uh, they're symmetrical. Uh, so they're appropriate for a lot of people, um, even those who have asymmetries or limbs uh, missing, upper limb, lower limb. Uh, prosthetics, no prosthetics. Um, again, you do you. Work with what you have and in a way that suits you. Again, um, this is Tai Chi, but it's Tai Chi adapted for you, the person, not me, the teacher. Okay, so here we go. We're going to do two hands hold the sky. Okay, so everything is suggestive, invitational and you can join in as much as you like. If I turn to the side, you can see I'm in this kind of position as if I'm holding a ball and then I'm just lifting the hand up and then I'm pressing up to the sky. Hands might go out of frame, but then if I come to the center, they fall down to the sides. So perhaps more important than anything is this sense of getting taller. And as we lift the hands, it's also about the rib cage elevating. So again, that should be accessible for most people to have this sense of growing in your seat or on your feet. The rib cage opens and then it's the hands dropping. So just get a feel for that first of all. Slowly gradually pressing up and then this fall to the sides. So we've got an active phase, the yang phase we might call it, as we press up to the sky. And then we've got this passive phase or yin phase as we let the hands fall in free fall all the way down to the fingertips before we pick them up again. So that's the first thing to kind of focus on is that we've got two phases, an active phase and then we let the hands fall. So we've got this idea or quality of song to relax or to let go. And that's not just embodied with our movement. We kind of connect that embodied movement with our state of mind. Oh, got someone wanting to join in, so please do keep going while I let Ellie in. Well done, Ellie. She's made it on the motorway. So I have this sense that every time we let go, we really are letting go. And we're just exploring this as a movement not just as a movement or an exercise, we're kind of exploring this, again, sense of agency as we push up actively, but then we're letting go of all of that doing and we're just letting everything come back together. Welcome, Ellie. Now, it doesn't take too much imagination to realize that if you wish, and again, it's an invitation, that this lift could coincide with a big in-breath. Good. 
Remember, out breath on the down. As I said, it's an invitation. It's not compulsory. If you prefer to focus on the movement and maybe some of those ideas, that's okay too. Our breath will take care of itself. Okay, let's have a little rest. If you are on your feet with me, just kind of have a little move. If you are in your seat, see if you can move from hip to hip and just ease some pressure. If there's anything that we know, pressure through limbs can be one of the things that's most irksome. Um, or if we are a wheelchair user, then pressure can be a big issue. Okay, so the next movement is Archer. So if you are seated, you're already kind of halfway there in term as, terms of the image because we are thinking about riding a horse because this is horse archery. I would encourage you, if you can, in your seat to try and be self-supporting in the torso. Leave the back of the seat behind, if you can. Uh, it's okay if you need the back of the seat for support, but for those of you who can, shuffle forward if you can in the seat so that you're self-supported in the trunk. That helps with some stabilization. And for those of us who are standing, you may want to adopt a wider stance insofar as you can with your limbs. And we're going to go to the left, first of all. So we're going to draw an imaginary bow. First of all, we pick up our hands crossed in front of the chest. I've got the right hand on the outside. That pulls the bowstring and I look to the left and I'm pushing through my chest and shoulders, drawing back with that right hand, pushing with the left hand. I'm going to full draw, I release, and then it's this balancing movement with my right hand. And then there's that song, that letting go. Pick the hands up, cross the right hand on the outside. It takes the thick bowstring, and now I'm looking to the right. And the same thing, draw the bow, focus on a target. I just need to move because I'm going to hit my blinds. Let the arrow fly and watch it fly as you extend the left arm this time. And then down. So once again, just get into a gentle but steady kind of rhythm of drawing and a smooth release. There isn't a hold as such. And then a relaxation phase down before we pick up actively. And again, a sense of expansion through the whole body down the torso, into the seat or into your feet, as well as through the hands and arms and across the shoulder girdle. Here we go again. If you wish, it could be a in-breath as we expand and draw the bow. And on the very point at which we breathe out, that's where we release our imaginary arrow. And then just breathe easy as we bring the hands down, lift them into place. And then if you wish, you can focus on that breath and the movement working with the breath and the release of the arrow on the out breath, off it goes. So once again, we've got this two phase movement. One where we're active We've got agency, but then as soon as we let or loose the arrow go, that's it. It's away, out of our control now. And again, this kind of chimes with ancient philosophical ideas from China of being in control of those things that we can, but also letting go and allowing those things that are beyond our control to kind of just do their thing. And wisdom, as they say, is knowing the difference between the two. 
I'm going to do one more draw on each side. Again, I've not been counting reps or sets. We're just going by feel. Last one. Off it flies. So there we go, Archer. Once again, because we've been in one place for a little bit of time, so you might Stump just gave me a little twinge there as I offloaded it. Um, just have a little move in your seat. In fact, I'm going to join people who are seated, as I said I would do. Our next movement is part the earth from the sky. Again, we've got this sense of expansion and contraction. All embodied movements for capture the idea of yin and yang, which simply means polar opposites. And we're embodying that idea with movement. So again, I'm encouraging you if you are seated to have this sense of self-support of being tall in your seat. The same for you who are standing as well. A sense of growth upward. And then we're going to hold a ball. Doesn't matter which hand you start with. One hand on top, one hand underneath. But make sure that that imaginary ball is kind of low down. Don't hold it in front of your face. If we lower it, it helps our shoulder girdle. Depress, relax. And again, likewise, elbows. Just let them rotate down and again this will help encourage the shoulders to relax and that in some circles has been suggested also gives us the message that we are purposefully physically relaxing okay or letting go tension but here we are we're going to be active now we're going to lift that bottom hand over the top on the outside it turns over and then I like to imagine that we're expanding into a sphere that surrounds us and we push the boundaries of that sphere. It's called part the earth from the sky. And then we let that sphere relax and kind of contract or collapse almost. We've swapped hands and then once again, Bring that bottom hand forward and up and turn over. And again, there's this sense of expansion, of extending the bounds of what's around us. And then we bring the hands together and we kind of now embody that sense of letting go. And again, allowing things to do their thing. Here we go again. Push the boundaries, create some headspace, embody that sense of headspace, but we can't hold on to it all the time. We've got to then know it's opposite, allow things to relax, because then that gives us the opportunity to go again. Helps us perhaps grasp this sense of the slick, cyclical nature of life it ebbs and flows. And again, it doesn't take too much imagination to kind of go, oh, I could breathe with this movement. Again, it tends to be an in-breath as we expand and that lift of one hand helps the ribcage expand for bigger breath. And then we just let everything go on the out breath. So now we really are embodying that sense of expansion and contraction, not only with our body, but with our breath as well. The thoracic cavity created by the rib cage, facilitates that big in-breath. It's an active phase. And then as we let the breath go, it quite literally is just allowing muscular tension to 
relax and that automatically lets the breath go. Good stuff. I'm going to do one more. Again, not counting sets or reps, we're just going by feel, really getting a sense of not only the movement, but the ideas or images that we associate. Fab. Okay, again, if you're standing up, have a bit of a movement on your feet. If you sat down with me, you can join me in just kind of moving from hip to hip, relieving pressure. There we go. I've definitely got a twingy stump today. <laughs> okay. Uh, rotation now. We've got Wise Owl. Uh, it's a popular, familiar movement. Very simple. Uh, we might add some extensions to it as well. And we'll start by turning to the right. It's a very simple sense of looking as if someone's called your name on that right side. So we look to see who it is. As we do so, we gently lift the palms and then we turn back. And as we reach the point where we started, someone calls our name from the left. So we look to see who it is on that side. And that's for movement. An alternation from right to left and back again. And again, we've got a sense of expansion followed by a return or contraction as we alternate from one side. And again, we're not looking to stretch, we're just looking to explore what that movement is like. Could be an in-breath just seems to fit with that lift and an out breath on the return. Same on the left, could be an in breath, followed by an out breath. And again, we can have in mind this sense of being active and having agency with the look. And then there's a sense of just letting everything go and coming back to the center before being active again. And that really describes Tai Chi's philosophy of exploring these two dynamics. being active and asserting our agency. And then also knowing when we need to let go. Realize that we need to go with the flow, so to speak. Again, I'm not thinking about sets or reps. I'm just going by feel. But we'll finish there. So the sense of agency, it's not an either or. Um, sometimes we get into states where we kind of go for an either or kind of uh, answer. And the Chinese or the ancient Chinese would suggest it's a bit more subtle than that. It's knowing that it's a dynamic there's times when we need to be active and engaged and exercising our agency. And then there's times when we need to kind of sit back and let things take their course. They might be bigger than us and there's not much that we can do about them in any case. Um, or it's just an active choice almost. Um, so there's always the seeds of one within the other. Again, that describes the nuance of yin and yang. And we're embodying that with our movement. Um, so let's go with another expression, a nice 
uh, making waves. We made waves last week with wave hands in clouds, but now we've got a movement called making waves or rolling waves, and we'll start off on the right side. Uh, if you sat down with me, you can try to push that leg forward. It's pushed forward, it gives me support. If you've got the ability, if you are stood up and your limb accommodates it, if you've got a lower limb amputation and you're wearing a prosthetic, all depends on the kit that you have, you might be able to push that right leg forward, maybe even get a bit of weight on it. Again, all depends on so many factors. But we're going to start off by just dropping our hands into warm seawater and then pushing with a bit of a lean into the water and sending off a wave. We pick our hands clear before replacing them back in the water to push a second wave. So if we're sat down and we manage to get that right leg forward, we can use it for support to lean into. The same also for those of you who manage to get a leg forward and you are standing again. You do you. So again, a simple alternation and ebb and flow feels very wave-like. And again, we can just simply look at the movement and notice that we've got this active phase of a push followed by the passive phase as we come back. So that's one way of thinking about this movement. An alternation from activity back to passive and then active again, creating waves. But we can do it in different ways as well, still with the analogy of agency or passivity for the whole of the movement. So let's swap to the left. Let's give the right side a break. Uh, so for the first half, uh, we're in that watery environment and now waves are going to move us. We're going to be passive. We're going to be like seaweed. Uh, we're going to become like a frond of tall seaweed and we're going to be moved by the swell to and fro. So now we're in a very kind of, kind of passive state. It's useful to imagine the swell coming from behind and passing through you and as we do so it carries us forward and then as we fall into the lull after that swell, we wait for the next one to push us forward, just like that. So let's place our hands in the water. And then as the first swell builds, we just allow it to carry us and the hands travel forwards. And then as it passes, we've got time to just relax back into the lull before the next swell carries us forward again. So now we're just letting ourselves go to sung completely to the whims of the ocean. It can feel quite nice to do that, to just completely let go and allow ourselves to be carried and supported by that buoyancy that the water affords us. But then we can let everything go still again. And now we become the one who makes the waves. We're going to push the wave and we're actually going to be the ones who are just creating waves. We're going to be active in both the push and the recession because we need to push successive waves. So here we go, ready, steady. So we've got to actively push that first wave out, draw back actively, and then push again. So now we are the agent of moving all of this water 
to create waves. And it begins to help us get a sense of how nuanced we can approach these movements in Tai Chi or Qi Go, that we can take different perspectives or adopt a different kind of frame from which to view what we do or how we do it, as I actively push like so. I'm going to do one more. And that's where we get this sense of how Tai Chi and Qi Kung are described in the literature as moving meditations. Um, meditation not in the sense of trying to create a blank mind, but actually being very active with imagery and playing, I would suggest, is probably the best adjective of playing with this imagery to suit how we feel. We might want to be very active one day and then another day. Maybe we've been very stressed out for one reason or another and we want to kind of sit back and kind of feel as though we've been supported and nurtured. So again, these are all kind of embodied in these movements. Unless someone tells you about it, though, you don't know, do you? Because you might just see someone do some Tai Chi or Qigong and you go, oh, that looks nice. But you don't actually know what's going on in their imagination to facilitate that movement to make it look nice. OK, I'm aware that we've reached the top of the hour. And that for some people, the archers is calling. <laughs> Kate's gone. <laughs> so let's bring things to a close. Again, we're going to use a simple movement. It's got an active phase and a passive phase, but we can also see it within that bigger picture as well of agency or passivity as well. So I'll stay seated. Again, if you're standing, you may prefer to have the hands hanging loosely. And we're just lifting the hands. There's the active phase. We close. And now we just let the hands free fall and drop as far as they'll go. They're sat down and we've got the scope, we can avoid the legs, but you might have arm rests. And then we lift again actively. And then down. We've got a sense of packing away, a sense of gathering. And again, could be an in-breath if that feels right for you, followed by an out-breath. And we'll do one more. And this time we can just let the thumbs link, rest the hands on the lower part of the abdomen. And now we come to a stop. But not really. We've still got our breath, but that's just doing its thing. So we can take notice of that. We're not going to control it because we don't have to. But it's the one constant that we can always kind of return to is this sense of bringing everything else to a halt and just spending some time to pay attention to our breath. And we might just do that at regular intervals through the day. 30 seconds sometimes is all we need. And then when we're ready, we just part the hands. And then we can get on with our next task, whatever that might be. For me, it's getting tea on. So there you go. Hope that's been enjoyable. Hope those concepts and ideas have been interesting and maybe thought-provoking. Um, let me stop the recording. I'll be back next week. If anyone's got any questions or comments, I'm here for you to ask them. But if you need to get off as well, you can just give me a wave and
Hopefully I'll see you again next.